Welcome to Managing Metrics, a series of videos highlighting contact center metrics that matter to managers. I'm Bruce Belfiore, CEO of Benchmark Portal, here to talk to you about the differences between average speed of answer, or ASA, and average time in queue, also called average queue time. I know we have separate videos that focus on each of these metrics individually, which make many of the points contained in this video. However, we've been asked to create this video to clearly distinguish between these important voice channel performance metrics. This video is brought to you by Benchmark Portal, the source for contact center training, certification, benchmarking, and consulting. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button so you can keep receiving free educational content just like this. Okay, so let's define average speed of answer or ASA. It's the average time it took for a call to be answered by an agent from the point when the caller first selected the option to speak to an agent. Your system takes all of these seconds together and divides by the number of calls actually answered by agents. This includes both calls that are directed to a queue and calls that go to agents who are immediately available and thus do not need to go to a queue. Now let's turn to average time in queue. This is the average amount of time callers wait in a queue from the moment they enter the queue after pushing the last interactive voice response prompt, if you have one, until the call is answered by an agent. An important point. This metric only applies to calls that are assigned to a queue due to the lack of immediate availability of an agent. I note that some systems, however, will assign all calls to a queue, if only for a split second, before directing the call to an available agent. Certain exclusions apply to both ASA and queue time. Neither of these include time spent routing callers or time callers spend interacting with the IVR. They also do not include abandoned calls, as these never reach an agent. Okay, so let's highlight the differences between the two metrics. This slide shows the difference in graphical terms. As you can see, ASA includes calls that slip right through to a waiting agent without ever entering into the queue system. Average time in queue includes only those calls which do end up in a queue. So let's do the math to determine the metrics. For ease of understanding, let's say the center takes 100 calls, of which 20 go straight to an agent without entering queue, thus there is zero queue time for these. The other 80 calls enter into queue and are answered in an average of 40 seconds, for a total of 3,200 seconds in queue. So 3,200 seconds divided by 100 calls equals an ASA, or average speed of answer, of 32 seconds. The average time in queue for the same center is 3,200 seconds divided by 80 calls, the number of calls that actually entered queue. This equals 40 seconds compared with the 32 second ASA. If every call goes into queue, then ASA and average time in queue will be the same. As noted earlier in this video, a few telephone systems force all calls to go into technical queue, if only for a fraction of a second. Average speed of answer and queue time are crucial metrics in call center management because they directly impact customer satisfaction and operational efficiency in the following ways. When customers call, they generally expect quick and efficient service. Long queue times and a high average speed of answer can lead to frustration and dissatisfaction. This can lead to abandoned calls, a negative impression of the company, or in worst cases, lost customers. Many call centers have specific SLAs that define the target times for answering calls and queue lengths. Failing to meet these SLAs can result in penalties, financial repercussions, or even the loss of contracts with clients. Long queue times can lead to burnout and dissatisfaction among call center agents. When agents are overburdened with excessive waiting times, their productivity may decrease and their job satisfaction may suffer, leading to higher turnover. Reducing ASA and queue time is a sign of an efficient call center. A well-managed call center should strive to improve its processes continuously, minimizing delays and maximizing agent productivity. 
which leads to cost savings and higher customer satisfaction. A few opportunities for improving ASA and queue time include ensuring your agents have responsive and seamless CRM and knowledge management tools that reduce handle time making agents available to answer more incoming calls, streamlining your current systems to improve agent speed in keying and screen navigation. Even an improvement of 10 to 15 seconds per call can have a big impact on resources needed over the course of a year. Possible misuse of after call work or aux time, also referred to as not ready time by agents. Ensuring your supervisors and workforce management team pay attention to these metrics can create more availability of agents to handle incoming calls. Ensure your center is properly staffed to handle call volumes by working closely with your workforce management team to ensure that your planned and actual performance are meeting your center's ASA and queue time goals. Comparing these metrics to your competitive peers is important to track to determine whether the accessibility of your operations is in line with industry standards, some things you can do through industry benchmarking. If you find you need to improve these metrics, then look for areas to improve. And now a question for you. How does your center benchmark on the ASA and average queue time metrics? Please let us know in the comments below. We'd love for you to share your thoughts and ideas. You can also find links to some of our other valuable resources in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to get great content delivered to you. Good luck optimizing your ASA and Q times in line with your strategic and competitive goals. I'm Bruce Belfiore. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Managing Metrics.